Thank you for coming here today. Sorry we're a little behind. Um, first things first, I really appreciate everyone uh, making some time uh, on this morning to be here and cover this event too. It's, uh, it's quite an emotional time, not only for myself, but the people around, uh, my family, my loved ones, my, my friends, uh, my whole team. And to say this is a bittersweet moment doesn't really do this, this, this moment justice. Um, it's been filled with a lot of ups and downs. I'm sure by now you guys have already heard I'll be retiring from competitive swimming. But with every end of one chapter, you turn the page to a completely new journey, a new chapter. And although a lot has happened in the last 25, 26 years of my competitive career, I am looking forward and beyond excited to the next 25, 30, 40 years of my future career. And this is where the real work starts all over again. I still remember when I was four years old, uh, I used to be so excited hopping into, this, hopping into a, an unreasonably freezing pool, seeing uh, my brothers and my sisters, my teammates, and being an only child, that strikes a different chord for myself. So fast forward to where we are today. I woke up not feeling the same excitement to go to practice. I did not enjoy the grind anymore. And one day I went to the office with mom, um, started encroaching onto the, the work aspect of life, and I started feeling that same sense of excitement again. And you start questioning yourself, okay, is this gonna last for a day or two, a week, a month? But that feeling kept going on and it kept burning brighter and brighter. So that's when you really know that it is time to move on. I don't like the, the connotation of retirement per se. I don't like it because it sounds like there's nothing to look forward to next. As an athlete, we need to have missions, we need to have goals. That, that goes the same for everyone. I wanna be the best in my field, no matter what I do, and I will continue putting the same amount of effort, dedication, focus, everything I've learned from the pool, the people I've met along the way, into this next phase of my career. Today I wanna say, there are, for everyone here, there are no questions off limits. Let's have some fun with it. Today is a sharing session. There is a reason why we didn't call this a press conference in, in the invites. Obviously, this looks like one, but we wanted the vibe and the feel to be more family oriented. The media has played a really, really big part in my career. A lot of people speak negatively about being in the media shadow or the media, under the media lens, excuse me. But I think the other way. I think this is a great chance, a great platform to inspire others to make or help the next generation get better. So this is exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do my best at inspiring the next generation. To all the young swimmers or young athletes or it doesn't matter, artists, whatever field that you're in, I hope when they look back at my career, they will just think, or just realize one thing, that nothing is impossible. There's no reason why a person half a foot shorter than everyone else in the Olympic final or around the world should be where I am today. Physiologically, unlikely, but yet here we are. So I hope to the young kids or even parents or whoever it is watching, everyone, that you can draw some inspiration, confidence, and comfort in knowing that the impossible is actually possible. Thank you guys. Um, hi, I am Hannah. I'm from Mothership. I have one question for you for now. Do you have any regrets over the course of your whole career? Do you mind sharing? Sure. Rana, do I? Sweet. Thank you, Hannah. Um, any regrets? You asked me that five years ago, I'd probably say yeah. Um, after the Olympics 2016, kind of took my foot off the gas, and I was about I was head and shoulders above everyone, got complacent, and I don't regret that right now, but I still wonder what if we just kept going uh, along that path. So there are these questions of what if, and I guess that's what makes life interesting, but do I feel a sense of regret? No. 
you win or you learn. And that's something I learned from one of my coaches. Sorry, just a follow up to that. What about, like for last couple of years ago, your cannabis taking, do you think that has affected your career? I think with everything in, everything in life, there are lessons, right? It, some people believe in, um, they're predetermined to hit X, Y, or Z. Life isn't such. Life throws you curveballs, you make decisions, and you have to live with those consequences or decisions that you've made. But no one is perfect. So do I regret it? I regret putting my loved ones and my family through all the angst and, and the scrutiny of it. I think in hindsight, the best way I can move forward is to know that there is a lesson to be learned in that. And if I'm better tomorrow than I am today, I'll take it. Uh, Joe? Hi, Glenn from Money FM. Hi, Glenn. Uh, given the massive uh, personal and financial uh, input that your mother and your late father uh, had to uh, sacrifice for you, would you like to see a different way forward for, um, for emerging athletes in Singapore? Would you like to see a, a, a different way for people to be able to, to, to study and to train overseas without having to, you know, literally use their life savings and their family savings to do that? Thank you, Glenn. <clears throat> Absolutely. I think it's all a numbers game, right? In Singapore, fortunately or not, we don't have the numbers to be able to make mistakes or we, we need a better formula than everyone. Coming from the US, NCAAs, they are thousands, 10,000s of college athletes, and only 1% of those college athletes make it to the pros, and maybe 10% of those 1% start flaming out in the year, um, year and after that. Differently, I would, I would be cautious to use the word differently, and this is why. Whenever we try to have systemic change, and we use the word different, people that have established the system naturally feel cornered. We need to understand that we play for the same team. We fly the same flag, and things can be done better. There's always a way to improve. If we have an existing solid base, which we do, it's gotten better, and I can, speak, I can attest to this from early 2000s coming to now, you know, SAQ, for example, better people, better support structures. We are moving in the right direction. And one of the things that I'd like to do, and I will be doing moving forward, is helping our sports ecosystem grow. I've had chats with Minister Edwin, uh, Alan Go, and they've been very receptive. So it's nice to see that I am transitioning into this phase where people are willing and receptive to taking our country to the next level. But different? No. Get better? Yes, absolutely. Hi, Joe. Steve from s and um, Just wanted to ask you, this sport is something you've done every single day of your life since you were, what, six, seven years old. What are your emotions now as you walk away from that and this whole open space that's the rest of your life. I mean, how do you feel? Is it fear, trepidation, excitement? I mean, it's one of what your emotions are. Yeah, man. <clears throat> I'd say emotions are definitely running, running pretty high right now. Um, I'd say almost, almost as, com as comparable to after 2016, but just in a different, in a different manner. You know, I, I mentioned a bit about bittersweet part, but also, to go one step deeper into your question, it's a sense of identity, right? You're, you're crossing over the, a different sphere, a different realm. And a lot of the issues athletes face, or anyone really, is, hey, once I leave my job, I'm do I've done well, who am I? So that's something that I've had to mentally prepare over the last few years and cultivate this new identity, something that I can be proud of, something that I can go to bed at night and sleep, wake up the next morning, look forward to, and know that I'm adding value to not only myself, but most importantly, the people around me. So how do you grasp with this identity change? It's tough, and it's an ongoing process every single day. But 
I've learned that if you're open, you're honest, people can see that you're genuine, they're more willing to help. And I've had some really, really good people help me forge, cultivate, and have that confidence to build this new identity over the last few years. And that's something also we spoke about the sports ecosystem. An athletic career is going to end. You know, everything comes to an end one day. But how do you give these athletes, especially the pipeline, the youth athletes, that reason to and reason and confidence to go forth and say, hey, I've learned a lot of cool things when I'm swimming or playing a different sport. How do I trend how do I use that skill to go to the business world? Where do you community service, inspire the people around you? So yeah, the identity change is an ongoing process every day. But well, we're getting there. Hi, Joseph. Uh, Reno from today. Um, would you say national service played a factor in your decision to retire? How much of a spanner did it really throw in your plans? And second question, um, what's going to happen with your existing endorsement deals and sponsors? Thank you, Reno. <coughs> Um, I'll answer the second one first. The existing sponsor and endorsement deals, the future is a promise to no one, but for right now, this very given moment, I'm proud to say I have great sponsors that stick by me through thick and thin. Whatever happens in the future happens. I wish I could give you a better answer for that. And to answer your first question about NS, when I went in, <clears throat> I, w I had a really negative mindset about you know, being taken out after the Olympics have to adjust uh, this new way of life. For the first three months, it was probably one of the, the hardest three months of my life. All of a sudden, one morning, uh, after I finished more or less halfway through my BMT, I don't know what happened, I woke up and felt like, okay, you know what? You are in this situation. Like, I have been countless times in a swimming sense. You just got to roll with it. You don't fight the tide, you swim with it. As Singaporeans, this is something that we all, Singapore males, this is something that we all have to do. So you either come to terms with that or you're gonna have a really hard time. I like to choose the path of least resistance. To answer your question directly about if NS threw a spanner in my career, looking back, I wouldn't like to think so, no. Are there better things we can do in terms of timing, going to NS, um, supporting athletes. From what I've seen inside, people are doing a pretty darn good job of supporting their men in their units. That part was a huge surprise to me. And I gained a lot of respect for the SEF. The Navy, I'm from the Navy, for my fellow Navy men. I didn't think I, was, I would be feeling that way two years ago, to be quite frank, but I am today. And I'm proud to call them my friends as well. We have to understand that the people taking care of us in NS, this is their livelihood. This is their rice bowl. And they're our military, they need to be bound by very strict sets of rules. They need to defend us. That is their job. It's the same thing for me in swimming. Go all out when you can. Their job is to make, make sure we're safe. The fact that they are willing to put their livelihoods and their careers sound a little dramatic for athletes or anyone to train, hats off to them. Like, a lot of respect. Can we do things better? Yes, but no. NS did not end my career per se. I ended it on my terms. Uh, Joseph Raushan from Money FM. Uh, good to be here with you. Firstly, I think I speak for most Singaporeans when I want to say thank you for putting us on the global map. We know how big a part your dad played in your career and everything you went on to achieve. He's not with here. He's not here with us physically, but I'm sure he's with you. What do you think he's thinking as you make this decision? And what would you like to say to him to convince him that it's the right one? He'd probably be saying, hey, come on, no, one more Olympics can. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what I'd say to him is, I think there's a, there's a point in time where you know, it's time to do something else. And also on the flip side, I get to spend more time and play golf with you. Definitely pull that card. <laughs> I think you'd see things my way.
Uh, so my question is, what during a time competitive uh, swimming, what do you think you meant to Singaporeans then? And going forward, what do you think you mean to Singaporeans now? I think when I was swimming, I was so engrossed in my own career. I didn't really know or set aside the time to think about what Singaporeans thought of it. That is the honest answer. The real magic is what happens now looking back, hindsight 2020. I hope that this is a source of inspiration. I hope that this means that we can challenge the traditional career pathways. There is more than one way to be successful. And most importantly, we got to do things that we ourselves are proud of. That's, that's all I can ask for. Whether or not it's, I don't know, if you're doting, donating all your time for a nonprofit organization or being a big time CEO of a company. I used to draw a really hard line between, you know, I'd rather be a CEO than donate my time. That's 16, 17 year old kid speaking. Because those were the traditional norms that I, was, I, I saw in society. But now I really think it's, yes, you need to earn a living to eat, right? We all got to eat. But at the end of the day, when we, start pa when, when we pass on, it's not going to matter, you know? And I think my dad's passing really opened my eyes to this as well. Mom, dad, family, they sacrificed a lot, right? They could have lived comfortably. They didn't have to mortgage the house and send me to the U.S., but they did so anyway. And that got me thinking, wow, this is a, this is a next level of love. So I want Singaporeans to be proud of what they're doing and not just go into a field or career just because my mom or my dad or my friends think that this is cool, you know, and this should be done. No. And I think we're, we're making good progress in that field. We can always do better, but I'm happy with the direction that we're taking right now. Hi, Joe. Over here. Thank you for your contribution and your service and for being an all-round nice guy to us uh, in general. Um, congratulations on moving on to your next phase of your career. I just want to ask, is politics in the equation at any, time, any point of time in the future for you? <clears throat> I mean, never say never, um, but for right now, I'm focused on the business ventures, on the personal side. If I am lucky enough one day to be in that spot, then so be it, you know? You can't put a limit on anything, but for right now, I'm very happy, like Rohit said, playing golf, going to my VC, my Zoom school, and helping mom out in the office. Yeah, just it's my turn to be a normal kid, or not a normal kid, a normal guy. Yes, please. I think there's Nasi Lamont or, is it? Rhonda. Guys, help yourself. Like I said, today is a very comfortable event. Eat, chill, and then I'll see you guys in a bit, yeah? Thank you.